what I'm going to explain you, I'm going to explain you something called network ACL access control list and I want to explain your security group. I will take a few example so that it would be easy for everyone to follow along. I live in London and I live into an area which is set of three buildings. So I live into an apartment complex and we have three buildings there. Let me give it an idea on that. So this is building number one. This is building number two. This is building number three. Consider this whole area as the VPC. Consider these buildings as subnet. So this is my subnet one. This is my subnet two. And this one is my subnet three. These are buildings. I'll give it a name so that you can understand what this is subnet three. Right now, this is what you should assume. But let me now paint the picture of what exactly it is that because I live into a house, a building called Bello House. So this is a place where I live and that is Bello House. And similarly, there are different names. I'll use those names so that you can easily understand the topic. Yeah, so this is good. 14 sign. So this is Bello House. Another one we have is called Chesterton House. Another one we his is called Roxil Avenue, Roxil House. Right now, I live in into Bello House and I live on let's say on seventh floor. Okay, now. What I need to do, I need to communicate to someone else in my apartment. So this is seventh floor. Let's say this is my apartment building here. This is where am I living and I have obviously people living into different places also should not be a problem. And what we have now, we have a security. So security guard is present into every building. It's a security guard come concierge so we can get things done by him. Like maybe there is a package coming up. He or she can pick up for us or maybe when we want to drop something, we can keep it with him or her and then they can give it to the person when they come in. They, they can accept our food deliveries when it comes in. So there is a security guard present into every building, right? Let's talk about communication channels. So I am here. Let's say this is my apartment number 100. Just give an example. Let's say I have to talk to a person. My friend, she lives into apartment number, let's say 14, and I have to talk to her. Now, though I live into the same building, that doesn't mean that I can directly walk to her apartment. What I would be needing, every apartment would have a door, right? So there is a door here. My apartment has a door. Her apartment would have a door. When I have to communicate, what would be the requirement? Requirement is, I have to come out of my door, knock on her door on 14th, and if she allows me, then I can go inside. So there is one security mechanism which is within the house, which is a door. Now, what if I have to talk to someone who is into different building altogether? Let's say there is apartment number 25 and I have to talk to that person. That person obviously have their door. But before I reach to that door, what I have to do, I have to cross the security guard here. Right. Hope you are getting the point. So I have to first cross this network security ACL. I have to cross this one also. And if they both allow me, then only I can go and talk to this person here. Right. The security guard is your network ACL. This is protecting not only my apartment, but the whole subnet whole building. Similarly, there is a network ACL here and there is a network ACL here. So all the communication is being protected. If see now, if the communication is within subnet, if I am talking to anyone in Bellow House, I don't have to go to the security guard. But if I am going across subnet, then this network ACL comes into picture. Otherwise, only security mechanism we have is a door. So I would say this door is my security group. So security group is like a door which is with every instance which protects that instance. And similarly, if you want to protect the whole subnet, then what you need, you need network ACL, right? So keep this at back of your mind. Network ACL protect the whole subnet, whereas your security group protects that individual instance only. They are applied on an instance level. The door is at the house level, apartment level, which is your instance and the Security guard is at network access control list, which is at 
the subnet level which you see so that's what my analogy is to learn what is security group and what is a network acl i'll quickly show that into the powerpoint so that you can relate and understand where network acl or security group would be actually applied right so we already saw vpcs we saw how these communication happen we saw how these network subnets are created and how they would connect to each other and what kind of traffic would be going through that so let me now show how my network acl would come to picture how did you build these diagrams probably just powerpoint that's all that's how i built diagrams right so now what we see here everything is sorted out and now we start introducing nickel see this so nickel is if you see the security guard icon this is sitting in the front of the subnet itself as soon as the traffic comes in or out that is going to through nickel this is a building security everyone has to go through that no exception only if you are going outside of the building or coming inside if you are within building you don't have to worry about nickel what is security group then if you see this a b c d e f machines this this circle here is your security group which is protecting that individual instance right so that's how your subnet is associated now what i have done i have put a detailed list of difference between security group and network acl which would be available to you and you should be able to see this thing so it will be available read through that go through any questions if you may have and we would try to answer that now let me bring home some more points related to security group before we talk about other stuff so let me talk about security group give me a minute i'll try to explain and ask you a question which would be giving you idea okay so i have a security group security group i have a rule there a rule says allow port 80 okay so this is my security group i call the security group sg01 now i have the security group this security group can be applied to multiple instances so let's say i have two instances here I have instance A, I have instance B, and this is the only rule present into my security group, which says allow port number 80. A and B both are part of the same security group. Same security group is applied on both of them, right? So both of them have the same security group applied. My question to you is simple. In this particular case, can A ping B? That's my question. Can A ping B? Can A ping B? Okay, I'm getting yes, no, yes, no. All right, I intentionally tried to confuse you and that is a common thing which happens. Let me explain. What you see, I have created a security group which is S01. So yes, security group is created within a VPC, but it is applied at instance level which means technically what is happening sg01 is getting applied like this now tell me will a and b be able to ping each other or not you get my point so though it looks like they both are sharing the security group that doesn't mean the traffic is not uh, traffic is allowed so security group is applied at instance level this will always check hey what port it is is it port number 80 yes i would allow it is it port number 80 yes i would allow it otherwise i won't allow that so that's how it is implemented it is implemented on an instance level though it is created on a vpc but it is implemented on instance level all right another question can I have multiple security groups? So answer is yes. Multiple security groups can be associated with an instance. With an instance. Sorry for my typing mistakes if there are any. So it is possible. So let now me ask you another question. SG01, SG02, SG01 says I am going to allow port number 80 and SG02 says I am going to deny port number 80. My question to you is, what would be the result 
they both are applied to the same instance that is one and then second is also applied on the same what would be the result will it allow or will it deny deny rules everyone anyone going to deviate from that what we are having here answer <laughs> deny allow let me let me explain now what i have shown you here it is a hypothetical situation people don't pay attention to that a security group have no deny statement there is no deny statement no nothing applied again first or not security group by default or maybe not by default never have a deny statement security group have always always just allow statement so when you create a security group you can say hey i want to allow 80 i want to allow 443 i want to allow 100 security group have never a deny statement so conflict would never happen sg01 says allow 80 sg02 says allow 443 so it would be combined all together it would never be yeah you got pranked <laughs> exactly stateless doesn't matter here stateless doesn't matter it is the way the security groups are there that is always always so security group does not have deny statement network acl have deny statement and i have documented all of this here so if you see this only allow statement and security group allow and deny both statement into network acl so that's how i have put this table read it it would give you a good idea on how all these things work now another tricky question uh let me think what i was trying to ask you give me a minute okay now my requirement is very simple i i want to allow port 80 from anywhere that's my requirement and allow ping only from same sg instances what i'll how i will achieve it my requirement is simple I want to create a security group which would allow port number 80 from anywhere and I want to allow ping only from the same security group instances. Right. So this is my requirement. Let me quickly show that into console and it may make more sense to you what I'm going to talk about here because this is an important concept in security. So let me go to security groups here and I would be first creating a security group. I would be then adding a rule in that. So I'm creating a security group. I would give it a name. Let's call it BESA test SG. I have to provide description to it is mandatory. I would put it into the VPC which we have. This is my BESA VPC. I am not creating any rule series inbound rule. I am keeping it blank, but the default outbound rule exists and I am saying create a security group. As soon as I create a security group, I would say uh, as, uh, SG allowed SG number here. See the security group ID. OK, now let me go to inbound rule. So I go ahead and say, let me edit inbound rule. And in this inbound rule, I can have a uh, traffic allowed. So I am allowing HTTP. So I say allow HTTP from where anywhere. I don't care anywhere anyone can talk to this machine on HTTP. So that's what I did. And this would allow me to have HTTP traffic coming into it. No problem at all. So this rule is ready. Now my second rule is complicated. Second rule says allow ping only from same SG instances. Now what if if I go here in the inbound rule and again I say hey edit inbound rule and say let me add a rule which is for icmp traffic which is for ping and i can say i would allow you from anywhere that means anyone can also ping it but that was not my requirement my requirement was ping should happen only from the security group itself nowhere else so what i can do here a good example here is to put a custom and the security group itself can be referred see this so this test sg is what I'm in and I'm referencing that also. So that would be doing what? This will say if anyone goes to HTTP, I would allow it. And if ping comes, but with the source of this security group itself, then only I am going to allow it. Otherwise, I won't be able to do it. You were getting error, Subhash. I'm not sure why. Let me say save rule and my security group is now ready. So what happens now? It would allow HTTP from anywhere. 
see this source but it would allow ping only from within the same security group nowhere else so machines within that security group should be able to ping at each other otherwise they won't be able to get pinged from anyone else so this is a good way now why it is a good way let me explain that what you can do you can create three security group let's say this is a web security group then you can create another one here. Let's say this is called your app security group and there is your DB security group. So these are security groups I have, app security group, and this is my database security group. And what I can do here, I can keep my databases or web or app inside it. Hope you're getting the point. And here I can create a rule which says, hey, web server, I would allow HTTP from anywhere no issues at all anyone can access but i can say on app sg that hey allow let's say port 8080 only from web sg so only web sg would be able to send traffic here no one else somebody trying to access this machine directly they would get denied and similarly in dbsg i can create a rule and say hey allow 3309 only from app sg so what I did, I put a layered security ensuring that only those specific machines can talk to each other, not everyone else can talk to each other. So that's a good way to put security, right? So hopefully everyone has understood how security works. What are the some components we discussed today? VPC. VPC is a big topic. Obviously, I can't cover everything, but I have added some extra information into the slide decks. So go through this like transit gateways are there that you can use and you can probably understand through picture. I have put some more details on IP addressing mechanism, how all these things work. And I have this VPC uh, reference card also. This is what I call service summary card. So it would also be available to you. So reference that, read it. And if you have any further question, feel free to reach out. We'll try to help as much as we can. Okay.